Do you ever wonder how your favorite Pokemon got its name? Etymology is the study of the origins of words. For example, the etymology of Pokemon is the phrase pocket monsters. While some names are pretty obvious, others stem from a deeper meaning. In this video, we'll go over the many animal, mythological, and other connections for the Pokemon of Generation 1. <laughs> what better place to start than with Pokemon number 1? Bulbasaur breaks down into the roots of bulbs, which is one of the earliest stages of plant life, and the Greek suffix sore, meaning lizard. Remember this, it's gonna come up a couple more times. Like now, combining with the plant ivy to make Ivysaur and Venusaur, which grows up from a bulb into a Venus flytrap lizard. On to our next starter Pokemon in Charmander. Charmander draws its name from the word char, meaning to burn or to singe, and Salamander, a lizard-like amphibian with mythical ties as fire-dwelling creatures. Charmeleon follows suit with Char, but gets combined with a different lizard in Chameleon. One of the most popular Pokemon of all time draws its name from simple origins, as Charizard is a Char lizard. Hmm. So does that mean it's Charizard or Charizard? <laughs> the last starter Pokemon family in Kanto starts with, of course, Squirtle. Squirtle derives its name from the term squirt and physically being a turtle. This safely puts to bed the wrong argument that Squirtle is a water squirrel. Next up is Wartortle, who gets its name from war and then honors both common shelled reptiles, getting Tor from tortoise and Tull from turtle, wrapping up the family as Blastoise, whose name comes from the explosive term Blast and Tortoise. Oh my god, does that mean that Blastoise is Blastus? For Caterpie, we simply have to look at the Caterpillar for inspiration. Metapod introduces some science into the Petri dish of names. Metamorphosis is a process of transformation, and Metapod does this in a cocoon-like pod. Once the metamorphosis is complete, we get a butterfly that is free. Butterfree. Moving on to Weedle, who draws its name from being a needle that's also a worm. Kakuna is just cocoon, with a little bit of flair. Finishing the family is Beedrill, that is a bee, that drills. Pidgey's name comes from every city dweller's favorite bird, the pigeon. The city is expected to address the pigeon poop problem this morning. Pidgeotto derives its name from pigeon and the Italian diminutive suffix Odo, with Odo meaning little ot. That makes Pidgeotto a little Pidgeot, which is a pigeon with the speed of a jet. So I guess it's really Pidget. He can't keep getting away with it! Rattata gets its name for being a noisy rat with a ratatat sound. The evolved form Raticate is a big rat with a passion to eradicate, or to masticate, which is to chew. Eradication through mastication! Okay. On to Spiro, who gets its name from being a sparrow with a sharp spear-like beak. Its evolved form Fero gets its name from being a sparrow that strikes fear into its foes. Given the beaks, I think these two should have their names reversed, since Fero's beak is longer and more spear-like, but I digress. Ekans is snake spelled backwards, and Arbok is cobra spelled backwards, if you spelled it with a K. Now for the only Pokemon your mom knows. Where would the Pokemon franchise be worldwide without this little electric mouse? But did you know its name comes from the onomatopoeia for the sound sparklers make? And the onomatopoeia of the squeaking sound that a mouse makes? Pikachu! Raichu keeps the same Chu ending, but replaces the beginning with the Japanese word for thunder, Rai. Make sure you're sitting down for this next one. Sandshrew is a shrew in the sand. The evolved form Sand Slash is another brain buster, combining sand with the term Slash, which it does very well with its claws. While researching for this video, I came across this hilarious nugget on Sandshrew's Bulbapedia page. Sand is simply sand. I don't like sand. I'll cover the Nido Pokemon together, since the only distinction between the two is really just gender. Starting with the root that is shared by all six Pokemon, Nido, which is Japanese for twice, and then add in the design concept of a needle. To make a little more sense of this, let's jump to Nidorina and Nidorino, where we start to see a little bit more familiarity to rhinos. Both get their respective Italian and Spanish diminutive suffix Ina and Ino, alluding to little rhino, which makes Nidoran female and Nidoran male even smaller rhinos. Nido Queen and Nido King are then appropriately the Queen and King of the Needle Rhinos. Clefairy draws its name from the musical symbol the clef and the term fairy. Clefable combines the musical clef with the term fable. Did you know Vulcan is the Roman god of fire and may be the inspiration behind the fire fox Fulpix? In combination with the Latin term for fox, Vulpes, and the number six for how many tails it has. Through evolution, Vulpix gains three tails and is thusly named nine tails, with a homophonic spelling of tails possibly alluding to a mythical nature. To jiggle is to shake, to puff is to inflate, thus we get Jigglypuff. To wiggle is to shake, to tough is to inflate. Your strength! That and the tuft of hair on it, Ted, and you get Wigglytuff. It's the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Zubat derives its name from the Japanese term Zubato, meaning to strike or pierce, and the fact it's a bat. Evolving into Golbat, this bat draws inspiration from the term Gollop, meaning to eat or drink quickly. 
I guess we now know what that mouth do. What did he say? This odd radish is called Oddish. It evolves into this gloomy bloom, and eventually turns into this vile plume of petals. Paris is a parasite. Through evolution, it becomes a parasitic insect. Venonat is a venomous gnat, a really small and annoying fly. Through the power of science, and Pokemon world logic, that gnat evolves into a moth. Our next Pokemon requires a little English comprehension, as beyond the obvious dig, let is the suffix meaning small. When you get three of them together, you get a trio. To understand the origin of Meowth's name, let's examine the inspiration behind Meowth originally. The Maneki Neko is the lucky cat from Japanese legend. Statues of the cat are often depicted holding an ancient coin from Japan's past. So, the name. Well, cat's meow. <laughs> And then the coin represents wealth. Cats also purr, and some of them are considered Persian. Thus we have Persian. Psyduck is a duck with psychic powers. Golduck is a duck that's gold. Wait, no, clearly it's not. Gold is often used to symbolize the psychic type in the Pokemon world, with consideration to gold gummies being loved by psychic type Pokemon in the Mystery Dungeon series, and the Saffron City Gym Badge's name in Japanese being the Gold Badge. So Pokemon has a theme here. Things get a little simpler with Mankey, which is a combination of man and monkey. Primate follows suits, combining prime, primate, and ape. This distinguished little lad derives its name from the terms growl and life, which means gracefully slender. The legendary that never was gets its name from the words arcane, referring to ancient and mysterious things, and canine, the scientific word for dogs. Being based on a tadpole, polywag gets its name from an older term for tadpole, polywag, and just adds wag at the end. The evolved forms just simply replace wag with Whirl and Wrath, respectively. Avra, Kadabra, Alakazam! These are the magical words that inspired these Pokémon. Much like the Poliwag family from earlier, the Machop family draws its inspiration from the term Macho and replaces the endings with the term Chop, Choke, and Champ. Bellsprout is a bell-shaped plant that sprouted from the ground, although I'm not exactly sure what about its evolved form is weeping. Victory Bell combines the words Victory, Tree, and Bell. Fun fact, Victory Bell only has one L because of the 10-character limit from Generation 1. This is a cool tentacle. This is a cruel tentacle. Geo is the prefix for Earth, and Dude is you for hitting the like button and subscribing. Moving on to Graveler, we combine Gravel and Traveler. Golem is literally a golem. It's not just a boulder, it's a rock. We get Ponyta from combining Pony and Bonita, which is pretty, in various Iberian-rooted languages like Spanish and Portuguese. Then we get Rapidash from Rapid and Dash. From fast to slow poke, which is another literal origin like Golem. Slow is the opposite of rapid, and bro is you for hitting the light. Magnemite is a mite-sized magnet. And fun fact, Magneton does not weigh a ton. In fact, it actually weighs about 132 pounds. So it gets its name from the concept of a magneton, which is a term that some physicists use for magnetic moments. This leak-loving bird is named after its design, which is inspired by a Japanese saying that translates into, a duck comes bearing spring onions. This is considered far-fetched, and so this duck is named. This flightless bird is also named after its design, which is inspired by the dodo, a prehistoric flightless bird, and the fact that there's a duo. <laughs> There goes our last female. Once it evolves and adds a head to the trio, we get Dodrio. Seal is seal. Dugong is dugong. That also plays on the word do. Grimer and Muck get their names from the terms Grime and Muck, both referring to gross things. As a fun fact, Grimer has been my first shiny Pokemon in Pokemon Go and in Pokemon Violet. You'll never be gross to me, little guy. This shell also acts as a shelter for Shelter. Say that five times fast. Two bivalve crustaceans inspire the name for Cloyster, the clam and the oyster. However, the English word Cloyster also means to seclude or shelter oneself. I like a good play on words. Like with our next Pokemon, the Ghastly Gas Ghost. Ghastly. Uh, yeah, say that one five times fast, too. Evolution gives us Haunter, who derives its name from the terms Haunt and Hunter, although I suppose it could also be a Haunter. Doppelganger is German for Double Walker, and in Mythos is often portrayed as a ghostly or paranormal evil twin. We take the back half of the word Ganger to get Gengar, the shadow Pokemon. Onyx gets its name from the mineral rock of the same name, replacing the Y with an I. Next up is Drowsy, which is a combination of Drowsy and the Z sound commonly made from snoring while sleeping, which could occur from hypnosis, the inspiration behind Hypno. Krabby with a K is a play on the word Krabby, meaning grouchy or ill-tempered, and the fact that it's a literal crab. Two species of crab inspire the name Kingler, the King Crab and the Fiddler Crab. On to another simple one in Voltorb, which is a simple combination of the words Volt and Orb. An electrode is a device that allows for an electrical current to run through it, and why the Pokemon has the same name. Although given how often in the game's electrode explodes, maybe the name really comes from electric and explode. For Execute, we match up the words Execute, Egg, and Cute. Executor drops the Cute Act and replaces 
replaces the execution for the executor. Who knew these eggs had a bloodlust? This little cub carries around a bone, although I suppose that would make it cubbone. So perhaps cubone gets its name from cute and bone. The evolved form Marowak combines bone marrow and the term whack. This next one's a little fun. Hitmon Lee and Hitmon Chan are amalgams of the words Hit and Monster, then finish with the last name of martial arts legends Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan. The tongue licks. These two cough and wheeze. This is a rhinoceros with a horn, and this is one you can ride on. Ride on these nuts! But for real, ride on combines rhinoceros with the suffix commonly used for dinosaurs, don, which was derived from the ancient Greek word for tooth, which I suppose makes a lot of sense when you consider a lot of dinosaur fossils really are teeth and bones. Chansey gets its name from the concept of chance, or something being chancy. Moving on to Tangela, we get the combination of Tangle and Ella, the suffix commonly used to form names in taxonomy, which is the science of naming, defining, and classifying biological organisms. Kangaskhan draws its inspiration from kangaroos and the term Khan. To better understand why exactly, the design of Kangaskhan draws on elements from Mongolian laminar armor around the head and shoulders. This little seahorse plays on the word horsey. It evolves into a sea dragon that's aptly named Seedra. Goldine is a golden queen that also happens to be a Tosakan goldfish. Seeking is a combination of sea, king, and also possibly a play on the term of seeking. This starfish family plays a little bit of opposites, with Star You and Star Me drawing inspiration from the concept of you and me. Mr. Mime is really just a guy that's a mime. Are we sure every Mr. Mime isn't just in a guild of street performers? <laughs> For Scyther, we just have to look at its arms, which are scythes, and combine it with the action suffix er. Much like Onyx from earlier, Jinx is a play on the actual hex word Jinx. Electabuzz gets its name from the term electricity and the sound it makes while buzzing. We get Magmar from the combination of the term Magma and Mar, meaning damage or spoil. And in Japan, this Pokemon's name is Boober. Just thought you should know that. Pinsir, like others before it, plays on the spelling of the word with the same pronunciation. Tauros gets its English name from the Japanese Pokemon Kentauros, which draws inspiration from the Greek word of the same pronunciation, meaning centaur. Up next we have this derptastic fish named for being a magical carp. The magic stems from a Chinese legend about a carp leaping over the dragon's gate to become a dragon. Which is exactly why Gyarados is my favorite Pokemon of all time. This atrocious Pokemon is the same name in Japan and derives its name from various Japanese words that I would slaughter pronouncing if I tried. Although slaughter is what one of those words means. Some of the others mean adversity, reversal, and turnaround, alluding to the glow up of the century when Magikarp evolves. While Lapras's design draws on the folklore of the Loch Ness Monster, the name seems to come from the French. One in particular, actually. Pierre Simon the Place, I, 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 I'm probably saying that very wrong, was a mathematician who wrote several books on the properties of the sea and the tides. Funny enough, the French were the word Laplace also means seat, which Lapras conveniently has on its back. Ditto is literally ditto in every way. Eevee is the evolution Pokemon. The first two letters of evolution are Eevee. The evolutions all end in eon, which, fun fact, is the longest span of geological time, roughly equating to a billion years. Add Vapor, Jolt, and Flare to the beginning, and you get Vaporeon, Jolteon, and Flareon. This digital origami is named with polygons in mind. An ammonite is a prehistoric mollusk most closely resembling a squid or an octopus today. And it's the inspiration behind Ammonite. Amistar kicks in the concept of the five-point star on its shell. In Japan, the horseshoe crab is better known as the Kabutogami. I can imagine there's a link to the Kabuto, which is Japanese for helmet. The same is all considered for Kabutops when we add in the Triops. A small crustacean resembling a tadpole shrimp. Eros is Greek for air, and this is a pterodactyl. But pterodactyls are but terrifying. Snorlax is just as simple, combining snore and lax, which is careless or relaxed. In Spanish, one, two, and three are translated as uno, dos, and tres, and that's the inspiration for the endings for the legendary birds of Kanto. In order, we add arctic, zap, and molten at the beginning of each Spanish numeral. This is a teeny dragon. This is a dragon in the air. This is a dragon with the honor of a knight. There's also Draconite, which is a mythical stone said to be found in the heads of dragons and is pyramid in shape, much like the horn on Dragonite's head, so look out, Dragonite. Finally, we've reached the legendaries. Let's start with the original, whose name is not just the adorable sound cats make. Mew comes from the combination of mutant, or mutation, and new. Lastly, we dreamed of creating the world's strongest Pokemon. We succeeded. That will wrap up Generation 1. Did you learn anything? Let me know what you thought in the comments below, and thank you for watching. Leave a like on the video and subscribe to see Generation 2. I'm Goat, and I'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>